Welcome my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. Today's video is on trace route command. This idea comes from my article that is called Top 20 Network Administrator Interview Questions and Answers, which is located on my website that is called CosmicNovo.com. There's a link that will pop up right here on the top right hand side if you want to read that. In addition, I'm kind of expanding on my previous video that was about ping command. So if you want to check that out, there will be another pop up here separate for that video. If you want to watch that as well, it's another good video to watch. So let's get into it. And the way I explain things is in a easy to understand manner without throwing a lot of terminology out there or anything like that. So yes, you know, knowing basic knowledge about computers is helpful here but I will explain it in such way where anybody can understand what I'm talking about because how many people actually use Traceroute or how many people even understand it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying sometimes it's hard to learn something if it's explained in the wrong way. Either way, uh, for this, we're going to need a command line, which we're going to open up right now. So in order to use traceroute, we're basically going to use the example from the article. It's simply typed in trace RT, <clears throat> pardon me, trace RT, followed by the name of the website you're trying to reach. This doesn't have to be a website. It could be a server of some sort or a switch, or I should say just an IP address of uh, a network uh, component or a location. So, and that gets me into why would you want to use trace RT before I even hit enter here and then a bunch of stuff comes up. I want you to understand why you would want to use it. So let's say at your work, at your office, for some reason, you cannot reach cosmicnovo.com. However, from your phone, which is by the way, on a network, on a different network entirely, you can reach Cosmic Novo just fine. Also, another example is an application that uses um, network connection to work. For example, an application that has to reach to a database that could be located in totally different state, country, this and that. It could be at the end of the world. It could be that it's not working. That's another reason you would want to use Traceroute. Or simply there is a server somewhere we can't reach whether it's used for storage or this and that, we would want to use Traceroute to figure out why you can't reach it from your office network, but you can reach it from any other network. So what it does in the nutshell, Traceroute, it traces all the routes taken on the network to reach CosmicNovo.com in this example. So it's gonna map it out for me. <clears throat> So think about it this way. Let's say you have a date or you are going somewhere that you've never been before. You open up your phone, you go to Google or Apple or whatever it is that you're using. You type in in your navigation the address that you want to visit. And it gives you all these routes that it takes. You know, it says go straight, go left, go right, this and that. The trace route kind of does the same thing in a sense. However, trace route it will tell you whether there are certain roads or routes that you cannot take or that they're broken or non-existent. So that's a very simple explanation of what trace route does. It tells you whether a certain turn is broken or non-existent. Hence the name trace route. I hope that's an easy one to understand there. So we're gonna see an example of this. As soon as I hit enter here, we're going to see what happens and I'm going to explain uh, all the steps that it's going through. All right, hitting enter. We trace out executed. This is typically what happens. It takes maximum of 30 hops as in 30 roads or 30 paths, if you will, in order to reach the final destination, which is this IP address for this website. And this may take a while. This is why I have a finished trace route of all the routes taken for that website. And I will show you what that is right now. So let's have a look at some of the things that kind of stand out. The first thing, the first hop that 
shows up is basically pinging my IP address of the local computer. So the computer I'm using right now, local um, IP address for that is 192.168.1.1. So that's a typical local IP address. Second hop is basically trying to ping my IP address, external IP address for the internet. So my internet provider, which is Charter, is actually blocking that information for security reasons. It automatically blocks it. There's nothing I can do about it, but it's perfectly normal to see a second hop fail timeout like this. And then you can see that hops three through eight are all from my internet provider, charter.com. Is Charter is my internet provider. And you can see all these, if you will, switches that it takes in order to access the internet that goes the outside of the charters network. So it goes through all of these and it seems everything seems fine. So that's perfectly fine. And then finally it reaches the internet and then it has to go through this switch here. And again, it looks normal. This route is normal. And then it goes to the number 10. Again, it's normal. Then we look at 11 and we can see that there's increased millisecond response not necessarily too bad because we're not talking like 80 milliseconds 100 plus or something like that however something does stand out here and that there is a third on on the third response or third attempt ping of it is there is no response whatsoever a timed out so if we are having issues connecting to the final destination potentially we could look at the switches or servers that are located at these two IP addresses. So the first one is 7214.23.232, um, I'm sorry, dot seven zero, and this other one that starts with 172. So because we see uh, no response here at all for the third uh, ping there, we can kind of possibly assume that there might be some kind of a latency issue with these two switches or nodes, if you will, or they could be server or whatever it is that they are. We can look at that because it could be a server somewhere. And the reason I say server is in a sense, depending on which type of thing are we troubleshooting? Are we troubleshooting a website? Are we troubleshooting application connection, this and that? So it could be a, you know, part of the final destination of like, for example, application that maybe uses some kind of database that is located at the server or whatnot, or server itself could be the firewall. We don't know, but we need to know kind of why, what's causing this, you know, delay or lack of response whatsoever, if there is a problem, right? But typically that's associated with higher millisecond response time. So in our case, this is probably just normal. And chances are that these servers here just have a limit of how many times you can ping it. So we're going to move on from that. And then it goes through a bunch of different nodes here, which could mean that it's just blocking. This is very typical that these nodes are literally just blocking these type of um, connection requests, which is fine. We can, this is pretty normal, but every time you see a gap in between where it fails somewhere, this is something we would have to be concerned about. And we'll potentially look at that here in a moment, but this is an example of a good trace route response. And then it finally reaches uh, the uh, destination of 130.211.160.1. Uh, which is where cosmicnovo.com is located as you can see here. So it took all the routes and it took it 23 routes to get to the final destination. And we know that everything is okay here. All right. So I found a website that's supposed to be down a safe website. And let's see, do I have that going here? Yep. I had it uh, tested. It's anthem.com, which is basically insurance provider, health insurance provider. And I saw that it's down. Let me just double check here one more time. I'm going to ping it one more time to double to, to make sure that it's down. And then we're going to do a trace route on it to see if we can figure out what's uh, causing the problem. Chances are it's the web server itself, but it could be something in between too. So I'm going to do a trace route on that as well. And then I'm going to, and you can see that it failed. 
you know, sent for, received zero, it's timing out, definitely down. So we're going to do a trace route. RT anthem.com and see what kind of response we can get. Again, this may take a while, which I will just fast forward to the results so we can see what's going on with that. So as we are looking at the results of anthem.com, you can see that they are similar to what we had earlier in the sense that it's taking same routes initially. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about. See, this is the first one. And we can tell that it takes, you know, hits my LAN, and then it goes through all of these charter uh, switches, if you will. And if we go back here, we can see that they are the same switches, and it takes that same route. However, after it hits those, it decides to go another way, which was indicated, which was dictated by a this switch. This switch says, okay, well, now you know, you're done with the charter network. Now you have to go through this something else. So let's look at the previous one. I'm sorry. Let's look at the previous one here. And did we take the same one five, one six six? So in our case, after the one six six, charter sent us to this other one, which ends with one two, which by the way, is probably next to it. So there is a switch probably next to it in the same data center. You can see how it's only off by three IP addresses. Anyways, it decided in this case for the anthem.com, which is this top one, it decided to bypass the next switch, which typically would have been this one to route to cosmicnova.com. Um, well, well, it had to take another one here. So instead of going to any of these other ones, you can see that this one just said, okay, well, this is going somewhere else. And it takes a different route and it goes to this other probably internet provider of some sort, which I'm assuming is related to AT&T. And it doesn't say that here, but the reason I know is if you look at these seven through 10, you can see that the switches names are STL, which is, stands for St. Louis, ORD probably stands for Orlando, Florida. And uh, we can see that they're called atlas.cogento.com. And you can see the IP address that are connected to there. However, if you look at number 10, you can see that it says ATT here. So which is AT&T, probably Orlando. So it goes through Florida somewhere. And then it continues with switches that are located or that are that belong to AT&T and then routes it further. And you can see that it hits another three gateways, uh, most likely um, in uh, on, on an AT&T server before it reaches its final destination. This is still taking forever. So once it's finished, I'll, I'll show you uh, what the end result is for Anthem.com. However, I want to talk about a point of failure that may occur that may show up in trace route command. And here's a really good example. We can look at these AT&T switches here. So 11 through 13. Trace route is can tell you immediately whether something failed and in, in the path that it's taking. So it's we can imagine that in this example that number 12 here timed out. So let's pretend this one timed out, literally timed out, and we need to figure out where is it at? Who, wh what's wrong with this? Chances are if it timed out that either it's blocking the uh, this type of uh, information from being sent back, which happens with my IP address here. Uh, but however, if it's just kind of in the middle here and we know kind of just kind of by intuition that it's supposed to take another route because it goes to the third one here but for some reason just one this one in the middle times out that's a clear indicator of a switch that is or the switch that is just bad so how do we find out you know if it's bad or not well we would have to reach out to this guy or this company and ask them okay well we need to get somebody from AT&T on the call 
or call them or contact them and say, hey, there's a problem here. And they'll be like, okay, well, let's send me the results of Traceroute from your location. And they send it, you send it to them, and then suddenly they're like, oh, the number 12 failed, but we still know it's kind of on their network because it keeps going to their network. You see what I'm saying? It goes to AT&T. We know all three of these hops are going to be AT&T, but the middle one fails. That means it's still on their network, and the problem is on their network, and they need to look at this. And they would know. It would, I know it would say timed out here, but they would know what the next one would be or should be, or whether there is a break of some sort that prevents everybody, and that one switch is causing the problem. So they would look at this and they say, okay, well, we know it's on this network. Let's scour our network and look for this broken switch. And that's the point of Traceroute. Of course, there could be other examples of that. And that is, let's say this one doesn't time out, but there is a huge, huge latency issue here. That would also indicate, that would also be indicated by Traceroute that there is a problem. So let's say their response time is like 100 milliseconds or even 80 milliseconds. This caused connection timeouts on the application and or a user end as well. So let's say there's a huge latency here. There's another reason why they would want to look at that switch or server and kind of see what's going on. The reason I say server is because it could be the final destination. We don't know. But in our case, we know it's not. It's just a switch that it's taking. And then with the trace route information, we can send forward this information to them and say, okay, well, you know, this is probably what's going on. Now, this thing is going to time out, and I'm going to kind of tell it to skip by hitting enter the attempt. For some reason, it gets stuck like this, waiting to get a re uh, response from the switch. And then I'm going to fast forward this to the end result. So as the final result of the trace route is coming up, we can see that the... Uh, Anthem.com is just simply down. This is what it tells us. The normal response from the trace route when everything's okay is indicated in my other window here. And you can see that the final hop gives us the final destination address. In our case of Anthem.com, it doesn't. It never reaches it. And this is clear indication that there's something wrong at the web server level so the webmaster for anthem.com needs to look at it and resolve the issue at the server level so but you know when we know that the website is down for everybody this is not necessarily the reason we would use traceroute.com our traceroute command for we would simply just use ping command to see if it's up or down but if there is an issue of latency if there is an issue of website or an application working for some people, but not others that are on a different network, that's when we would use the trace route. So it's for troubleshooting connection issues that are specific to a network. You know, meaning that just because I can reach it doesn't mean that some other people can as well. So this is how you would use trace route to figure out where is the breaking point on their end and why can't they reach or why can't I reach a certain web server, application server, or what not. Please share this video with friends, leave a like or any comment, and I will answer them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.